Hello, this is Justin from The Tech Train here, and I have a new idea for using PowerPoint to create an interactive test for students that takes the theme of text messaging. You see here, uh, I have it running now, and on the left-hand side, I have my simulated mobile phone. And on the right hand side, I have three possible responses. So on the left, we've got a text message that says, what is the tool in Microsoft Office, which lets you copy just the style of the text? And it's up to us now to fill this response with one of these three answers. Uh, let's go for paste over here on the right hand side. So I click that. And you can see I've sent my text message and I've received a response. In this case, unfortunately, I didn't choose the correct response. Uh, we'll go on to the next question, so I'll click Next. And here again, we have a text message which says, which YouTube channel shows you how to make this template? Now we have three possible responses. This time, let's go for the tech train. And fantastic, we've sent that text message off and we have a response that says we've got that correct. So let's get started and see how to build this entire presentation, including all the images from scratch. So the first step with this project is making the mobile phone image. And the first thing I'm going to do here is close up the thumbnails on the left and I'm going to change the layout of this slide to blank. So I'm starting with a new fresh blank slide. Now we want a background which is going to look a little like a desk, for example. So a wooden background or something like that. So I'm going to right click, format background, and you could choose a solid brown color or even a gradient. Uh, what I've done uh, is to download a picture from the internet. Um, I've used uh, CC Search, Creative Commons Search, so I've downloaded a texture which is free for me to be able to use in this way. Um, if I click on Picture or Text Fill here, I can choose to insert the file, which is here, and that gives me my desktop. Now, the mobile phone itself is just simply made of a few basic shapes. So I've gone to insert shapes and the one for the mobile phone itself is the rounded rectangle you can see just here. Uh, that's in recently used, but in the rectangles area, it's the second one in. And if I just draw that out as a, a sort of a rough mobile phone shape, there we are, that'll do. Um, we need to then fill that. So using shape fill, I'm gonna fill it with black and I'm gonna give it a white outline, like a kind of a silver edge around the mobile phone. There we are. Uh, the next thing I'm going to put in is the uh, speaker area at the top. So I'm going to go on to insert shapes and I want a sort of an oval, not an ellipse. I actually want a sort of a cartouche type shape. Uh, in the flow charts area, you see this, um, it's called a terminator. Uh, effectively what it is is a rectangle with, with two rounded uh, ends. And I'm going to draw one of those, something like that put that fully near the top. Uh, you see with uh, PowerPoint, the, this uh, latest version of PowerPoint, if um, I move this image around, a little red dotted line appears when it's centralized, when it's central to the image in which it's uh, contained. So that's quite a good way of lining the images up. Now this, um, I'm gonna have any outline on this one, but I'm gonna fill it with a, a gray color. Uh, probably something very dark grey. I think that one there, so that's about 35% uh, lighter. There we are. Uh, next, I want the microphone at the bottom, which is a circle. So I'm going to click on the circle shape there, or oval shape. Now, a little tip here, when you create uh, a circle, it's hard to get the exact shape of a circle. You can sort of do it roughly, but it's a little bit tricky and it's easy to get that slightly off. If you hold down the shift key on your keyboard, it snaps that shape to a perfect circle. So you cannot make anything other than a perfect circle. Uh, I think I have it about that size. I'm gonna bring that down and again, look for the red line so I know it's centralized. And again, just gonna color this with that same gray and get rid of the outline. So there we are. Now we need to have the screen itself, the, the white shape. So I'm gonna just have a, I'm gonna have an ordinary rectangle, not a rounded one, but a, a square rectangle here. I'm gonna draw that out. So it's uh, roughly like that. And this one here is gonna be filled white. 
and won't bother with an outline. So there's our um, foam for the moment. Now the example I gave you at the beginning looked a, bit, a little bit 3D. We'll apply that 3D effect a little later uh, because what we need to do is put the actual speech bubbles into this screen here and group the whole thing together before we can make it 3D. So let's put in some speech bubbles. We want three of them. So if we go to insert shape and then down to call outs, which you see here at the bottom, and I'm going to choose the slightly rounded uh, call out. There's a square one there uh, or the round one. I'm going to choose the round one. And they're going to make it sort of about three quarters the width of the screen. Now, the first one's going to be on the left hand side, but this little um, the bit that sticks out here, it indicates the direction from which the speech is coming. Uh, that needs to be pointing out of the left hand side. So if I click on this shape, you'll see there's a yellow dot there just at the, the end of that point, which I can click and drag so that it is on the left hand side like that. Uh, now this needs to have no outline so I'm going to get rid of that and for the fill this one here is a sort of a grey colour so I'm going to choose that grey there. Now I need to have two of those so I'm going to with this uh, object selected I'm going to press Control D to duplicate that and bring this one down there. And then I want one uh, more, which is going to be on the right hand side. And of course, this one here needs to have that little arrow pointing onto the right hand side. So I'm going to click and drag that round so it's pointing to the right hand side. And this needs to be green. So we'll choose that green there. So there we go. We've now got the uh, little speech bubble set up. Let's get some text in there because we need to format the text so that it looks realistic. So if I just double click inside that speech bubble there, I can just write sample text. And I'll do the same thing for this one here. So sample response um, and then sample reply. Doesn't really matter what you write in. Uh, at this point. Now one of the things we'll need to do is to move this text um, up to the top of the speech bubble so it's not centralized like this. If I go to the format menu here and I've got the word art styles box I can click this little pop out button at the bottom right corner which opens up the tab on the right hand side, sorry the, the pane on the right hand side. Now there are three tabs within this and the third one is uh, text box which if I click gives me uh, a number of options here. Vertical alignment is the one that I want and I want that to be top. So you'll see this text now pops up to the top hand side, uh, top hand side, the top side. Um, and then I'm going to do that same for the second speech bubble and for the third speech bubble. Uh, I also want to have all the text left aligned so I can simply choose the left align button as usual. Uh, the white writing inside here is fine, but for these two text boxes, the text should be black. Actually, black looks a little too dark. Um, I'm going to change that to just slightly off black, just sort of about there, I think is fine. That looks slightly more realistic. And just finally, I think the, the next thing to do is to reduce the font size slightly so it's more believable. That's about right. That, that looks uh, pretty good so far to me. So I think so far we have the mobile phone um, done. You, know, you can play around with that as much as you want. You could put a little sort of hash texture over the uh, speaker and microphone, I suppose. But I'm going to keep it like that for the moment. Now, the final thing I'm going to do to make this phone complete is to give it that 3D look. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the first item, first shape here. Um, and hold down the shift key and then click all the other shapes as well to select all parts of that. Alternatively, I can click outside that, drag across and highlight all the parts that way. Either's fine. And what I'm going to do now is group them. So I'm going to right click somewhere on here, go to group and then select group. So this is now one, one shape, one object which we can move around. And with this object selected, we can now apply some built in effects. Save some time, might as well. So if we go to the format menu, you see in the shape effects, we have a variety of options. And in fact, if we go to preset, uh, you can see that there are various ways in which we can make this object look 3D. And preset five is pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click preset five. Um, 
play around with that as much as you like but basically there we are we have what looks a pretty good pretty realistic 3d mobile phone so that's the phone done the next thing we need to do is to have these uh, little answers on the right hand side which i uh, produced as sort of pinned uh, little slips of paper so in the next section of this video i'll show you how to produce the responses So to create the three possible responses on the right hand side, what we need to do is to again go into shapes, so insert shapes, and it doesn't really matter what you use particularly, you could use these little speech bubbles here. Uh, the option that I chose was the one that looked a little like a folded piece of paper, uh, it's in basic shapes, so I'm going to simply draw out one of those like that. And what I'm going to do is to rotate that slightly and change the color. So I'll have a slightly paler blue like that, perhaps. Um, we could change the outline to a sort of a dark gray or the black, something like that, maybe. And I'm going to add a shadow as well. So pop a little shadow on there. And the final thing is to add a pin. And I've actually, again, gone to Creative Commons uh, to search for a free image that I can use and uh, that is already saved there it is a pin it's a little big so i'm going to reduce that i've used um, an image which is uh, saved as a portable network graphic or png because that has a transparent background so you see it looks quite good when you uh, stick it in front of that piece of paper there one of the things though that you'll notice at this point is that the shadow from the pin is pointing left as indeed is the shadow from our mobile phone but the shadow effect for the paper is pointing to the right it's not a massive thing but we're going to change it anyway so with the paper selected i'm going to go to format shape effects shadow and the best thing to do here is to click at the bottom where it says shadow options which opens up the panel on the right hand side and what i can do now is uh, i can change the size of the shadow and i can change the direction of the shadow so if we change that so that it's pointing out uh, of the left hand side so let's just change that oops wrong one there we go change that so it's pointing to the left slightly more like that perhaps there we go and bring that in slightly as well so we can play around with that uh, not going to worry too much but i think that'll be that'll be fine there uh, right next what we need to do is to um, shift click the pin and the piece of paper press ctrl d uh, which duplicates both of those bring one down here ctrl d again and brings one down to the bottom and i can now rotate these bits of paper around just to make it look a little jaunty a little more random a little more scattered perhaps and i'm also going to change the colors of these bits of paper you we don't have to do this but it's uh, just adds a bit more variety so i'll have this one as orange and this one over here let's have a, a green one perhaps as well uh, right so now we've got our responses ready for um people to choose can move those slightly further to the right like that there we are uh, the next thing to do is to think about setting up the first question and adding in all of the slides and responses that we need in order to do that. So what I'm going to do is open up the thumbnails on the left hand side again. And at this stage, we'll now look at how to add the responses and answers for your first question. So for adding in each of the questions, what I tend to do is to duplicate um, this original slide here, just Control D will duplicate it and just keep that um, first slide as a sort of a template which I'm going to be then reusing in future. So my first slide at this stage will actually be slide two. Uh, so on slide two, what I'm going to do now is to add in my questions. So let's now double click in this first box and write out our first questions. So let's have what color is the what color is grass let's keep it like that what color is grass now for this one of course i want to get rid of the text in these two boxes so i want those to be blank for the moment and on the right hand side i want my three possible answers so let's put in blue green and orange 
there we are. So those are my, my three possible uh, responses. Um, okay, at this stage, that's all set up, that's fine. I need to now duplicate this slide three more times for the three possible answers. So with this slide selected, uh, I'm just gonna press Control D three times, and that gives me my question, response one, response two, response three. So we click on uh, response one. So that's slide three in this case. So this is going to be the first uh, of the answers, which in this case is blue. So what I do is I transfer that answer across to the green message box. And then in the gray message box at the bottom, I write out what the response to that would be. And this case is wrong, of course. So we say, no, I think you're looking in the wrong direction. There we go. So that will be the response if the user chose blue. Now onto the next slide, we copy across the second possible answer, which in this case is green. And of course, this is the correct answer. So we're going to write in here whatever we want to say. You got the right answer. And that's that. And then finally, uh, our third option. And of course, you could have more than three options. You can see how you can simply add more um, slides and more of these responses on the right hand side. It's pretty flexible as far as that's concerned. So our final option was orange. And the response to that was, um, which planet do you live on? So there we are. So now I've got my question slide was the first one. Um, I'll just hide uh, that first slide there for the moment. So my question slide and then my three possible answer slides. Now the next thing to do is to set up links on the question slide to those three possible answers. So if I click on this blue um, response here, I want to be able to link to the first response slide, which is the one where blue has been entered as the response in the green question tab. So I'm gonna click on the blue. Do make sure that all these links are in your question slide. So if you have three answers, um, they're your three slides here and the one at the beginning of that group is your question slide. Do make sure you're adding the links there and only on that one. So I click onto blue, I go to insert, action, and then I can simply choose hyperlink to, and then choose the slide dot dot dot, which brings me my list of slides. This is supposed to be linking to slide three. So I choose slide three. And one other thing you can do if you want to is to add a sound effect, which uh, I did in the demonstration at the beginning. So I'm gonna choose play sound. And what I actually uh, have done is I've gone onto the internet again, and I've found and downloaded a, a free to use sound effect. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below um, for that uh, page where you can get that sound effect uh, downloaded, but there are plenty and you can use any sound at all. I choose other sound and it's the ding sound effect there that's the one and click OK. Now I need to do the same thing for the green response here. Green should be uh, linking to slide four so we go to action hyperlink to slide dot 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 and it's slide four and again play the sound. Once we've imported a sound um, for our presentation it'll appear in this list so that's the ding sound effect at the top there. And finally, our third answer, orange, will need to link to slide five. So we go to action, hyperlink to slide five. And oops, add the sound effect as well. There we go. Now, the problem, of course, at the moment is that whilst we've set up links for these three uh, question responses here, the user could click anywhere on the slide and simply proceed from one slide to the next, as you would in a normal PowerPoint presentation. We need to stop that. We need to prevent the user from being able to move from one slide to the next in any other way than um, clicking on these three links here. So to do that, what we have to go to is slideshow at the top and then set up slideshow. Now the default uh, type is presented by a speaker full screen. What you want to do here is change that to browsed at a kiosk full screen. And that simple change means that it is no longer possible to go from one slide to the next unless you click on a shape that has been given a link. 
in the way we just have. So that now has set up this slide so that we're jumping to either slides three, four or five. So we can now see that presentation. So if I click F5 and run it, you can see I can click anywhere on this slide. It isn't going to go anywhere. I can now choose one of these responses and you can see when I put my mouse over one of these shapes, the mouse turns into a little pointing hand. So we know that is a link. Let's try going to blue. So I click on blue and you can see that that has now put the response blue into here and then I've got my answer here. Now these no longer have links on because of course this is not the same slide as the one we were looking at a second ago with all the links on. So if you've got more than one question, how are you going to then allow the user to move on to the next question? Well, the best way of doing that is to simply insert another shape. Um, I put on an arrow originally, so let's draw an arrow out here and add the word next to it. So right click edit text and write next. And we can format this any way you like to make it tie into the theme. I'm going to put that down here. Now notice I'm putting this into the first of the response slides. So the response slides um, are the ones where you want to be able to allow the user to move on to the next question. You don't want it in the question slide because the only way you want them to move on is by answering that question. So uh, let's say now that I'm going to have another slide after this. Let's just add a a blank slide here just with anything written on it just for the moment. Uh, so let's just say finish. Obviously I'll do something proper in there. Uh, but just so we have something to link to. So this arrow here is going to allow us to skip over slides four and five. We don't want to show those because they're just the alternative responses. We want this arrow here to jump over these to link to slide six. So that's simply a case of insert action and hyperlink to slide six. No sound effect because this isn't a text message one. Once I've done that, I can simply copy that uh, shape. And if I click on slide four and paste, and again on slide five and paste, it retains that hyperlink. So again, let's press F5 to run the presentation. What color is grass? This time let's choose green. There we go, so I've chosen green. There's my response, there's the answer to that response, and there's the next button at the bottom right, which I can now click on. And that takes me, of course, to either the finish or to my next slide. So that's the PowerPoint presentation template. Quite simple, quite easy to set up, and it's quite versatile as well. You can have as many or as few responses on the right hand side. It doesn't have to always be three. It could sometimes be true or false. It could have five possible answers. All you'd have to do is change the number of response slides that you're using. That's that's all you'd have to do. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you did, please do give this video a like. It really makes a difference. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions or comments, do leave them in the comments below. I do always read the comments and I do, as soon as I'm able to, reply to those comments if necessary. And if this is the first video you've come across for the tech train, do please, before you go, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you're first to hear of the new videos that I produce. Um, so thank you very much indeed for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye for now.